232 kilowatts. This thing reaps. 62% taking 176 kilowatts. So I just discovered something very annoying for an electric car. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the French Connection, and welcome to another Salmon Arm Challenge. They're back. The road has opened again, so we can drive to Salmon Arm and back home today in Cochrane here. I will be using uh, the Ionic 5, so that's the ultimate highest trim here in Canada. I don't know what's the name of it in other countries. 20 inch wheels. Uh, it's a brand new car. It has only 400 kilometers on it. So that's perfect. Absolutely no degradation. The battery is holding 73.8 kilowatt hour or something. So that's the uh, obviously the long range uh, version. The big battery is 77.4 kilowatt hours and 74 kilowatt hours usable. Uh, yeah, brand new car. Tires at, uh, at or at the proper uh, pressure. Sorry, the weather for today we're gonna have uh, between six and nine degrees. So the temperatures are gonna be a bit lower than for the previous Salmon Arm challenge. But hey, winter is coming, right? Uh, it should be cloudy today, but that's about it. No rain. Uh, wind as usual in the mountain, and you know it by now. In the mountains, it's never really windy. It's uh, it's gonna be calm winds, and I'll update it throughout the trip with the temperature as well. Uh, yeah, so that's for the weather conditions. Yeah, the car obviously is at 100%, it's all warmed up. Uh, I uh, set the preconditioning for 620, it's 619 right now. So yeah, let's take a look at the uh, trip planner. I mean, I mean, there is no trip planner in the uh, Ioniq 5. That's, that was my surprise. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, we'll take a look at that, that in a minute and uh, we'll use ABRP as well just to have an idea of uh, what to do. Okay, let's uh, hop in. Okay, so 100%, uh, car is warmed up. We're at 22 degrees here. I'm probably gonna decrease that to 21 and we'll see how it goes. I'll just use uh, comfortable temperatures. Uh, 437 kilometers of range, but that's probably gonna be a bit less than that on the highway. Like I said, there is no tree planner. It's just basically a navigation, a classic navigation system. And you'll see if I set somewhere on my destination here, it's just going to tell you obviously insufficient charge to reach destination. Visit the charging station along the route, but I have to do it manually. The route guidance will start now. So, and it's giving me stations in Canmore, Golden, you know, it's not. Uh, so, yeah, I'll uh, probably do it manually. Oh, that's the Electrify Canada here. I'll set this one as destination. Actually, I'm not going to do that because I don't want the car to precondition uh, closer to Golden the route and use battery right if I can make it to Revelstoke. I don't know with that car, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, okay, I'll cancel that later. I want to show you what's going to be the plan using ABRP. Uh, so I set the uh, long range Ionic 5 here. And yeah, uh, it's planning a charge in Golden. It says we'll arrive with 34%. So I might try to go to Revelstoke. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know exactly the range of that car, so we'll play, play it by ears. Uh, and that's why I don't want to set Golden right now, because then it's going to use uh, energy to precondition the battery, and I don't want the car to do that. I want to keep the energy to drive it maybe to Revelstoke if I can do it. We'll see. I'll keep you updated. Then we'll turn around in Salmon Arm back to Revelstoke and Golden. Uh, on the way back. So we'll see. I might update the plan. Uh, as usual, I like to take a look at ABRP, especially in that case, because there is no trip planner in the car. But uh, yeah, no, that's uh, that's about it. I think uh, we're all ready. We can hit the road. I didn't talk about the different modes, but obviously I was in eco mode. There are three modes and I started the trip and I will stay in eco mode, uh, if that makes sense. And uh, something to note is that in the Ionic 5, the front motor can be disconnected. So it's not even really spinning, let's say, being, you know, coupled to the wheels, it's just disconnected completely so that's less friction and uh, a bit of uh, consumption gain here so that's uh, interesting to note 
This is not an efficient vehicle. <laughs> 23.4 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers since we left home. So yeah, but that makes sense. I mean, like it's basically a brake. The it's not the most streamlined vehicle, and there is big tires on it, 20 inch wheels with. The tire's width is like 255, which like doesn't make sense. Way too much for an EV. I mean, on the Mustang Mach-E, it's pretty much the same torque as this one on the premium all-wheel drive. And it has 225 millimeters width for the tire, for the tire, so, which is a lot better for the efficiency and doesn't, doesn't have any problem with the, to deal with the torque. So, But anyway, uh, yeah, so I won't be able to make it to Revelstoke. That's for sure. I'm going to cancel the route. Uh, and we'll set the Electrify Canada station here in Re Golden, sorry, so that it preconditioned the battery. So yeah, I'm gonna do that, but yeah, Revelstoke is uh, way too far for this car. Okay, arriving at the Electrify Canada station, which is available. I mean, there is no car there, I can see it. The battery is at, uh, it's between 18 to 24 degrees Celsius now. So it has warmed up a bit, but it's not a lot when you compare it to, for example, a Tesla preconditioning. Like the battery goes all the way to like 42, 45 degrees Celsius, something like that. So it's like half half the temperature on the Ionic 5, so we'll see, but I guess that's gonna work just fine. Yeah, we've driven 246 kilometers. Yeah, where is the 350? I guess that's the last one, yep. There you go. So 300 and, uh, 246 kilometers, two hours and a half. Oh, that's a Tesla. <laughs> there you go, that's here and 21.2 uh, kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. So yeah, really bad efficiency, but yeah. I wasn't expecting great efficiency from an Ionic 5 all wheel drive, but this is really, really not good. Okay, park. And I'm gonna plug in. Okay, and we're charging. What? 40 kilowatts? Uh, here we are, Electrify Canada charging stations. Well, I'm gonna wait a few, like maybe a couple minutes and then I'll change. Ah, c'est tellement de la merde, It's just giving me 50 amps. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's ramping up. 106, 120 kilowatts. Looks like I need to charge to 65%. That's what, uh, that's what uh, ABRP is telling me, and I think that would make sense, but I'll double check with the, uh, okay, connect to my phone here. Uh, oh yeah, 160 kilowatts now. There you go, 175 kilowatts, 176 here. Good, so yeah. Oh, even 177, nice. Okay, so I better make sure I know what number I need. Okay, 56%, yeah, 56%, I'll arrive there with 15%, yeah, I like that. I mean, it charges so fast anyway that it doesn't make sense to just take a 10% buffer, I think. Might as well take 15%. 178 kilowatts, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna, take a washroom break and I'll be on my way in like three minutes actually. I got 200 kilowatts, now it's uh, back to 150 at 43%. Yeah, not sure what's going on, but uh, I'm at 51%, so I should definitely have more than 150 kilowatts. Uh, so not sure if it's the charger or the car right now. I should have more, I should have like something like 200 kilowatts. I'm looking at the charging curves 
of the some charging curves of the Ionic 5 here and yeah at 50 percent I should have had like 200 kilowatts easy so yeah I don't know but anyway it's not bad speed to be honest uh, it's working well it's just a bit disappointing I saw 200 kilowatts around uh, I think with 30 percent 40 percent I forgot 56 let's unplug well that was a quick charge we charged nine minutes took 21 kilowatt hours. Well, let's go then. All right, at the charger here in Revelstoke, started to record a bit late. I don't know why the GoPro didn't want to start recording, but anyway. So I'm lucky the 350 kilowatts charger is available. Hopefully I'm gonna have more speed than in Golden. Uh, that should do. Let's take a look at this. So the battery temperature is between 20 to 27 degrees. We've driven 150 kilometers. Average consumption was 19.7 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. And uh, yeah, so it took us almost two hours, but I'll have to remove some time because there was some construction. Uh, yeah, let's plug in, but I'm not looking to forward to it because I feel like the, like the battery on average is at 23 degree and a half. Seems pretty low to me. Uh, okay, let's plug in. Okay, connecting to vehicle, initiating charging. All right, so is it, well, it's not going to be stuck at uh, 40 kilowatts at least this time, so that's a good thing. 104. Give me the shoes! Oh, yeah. Nice. There you go. Good. Very good. Okay. So we're charging. That's a good thing, 191 kilowatts. So it says if I go to 64%, I can drive to Salm Alarm and back here, and I'll be arriving here with 6%. So I might go to 70% just to make sure I have a buffer big enough. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, I need to go to the washroom. So we'll charge to 70%, that should be pretty quick, and then uh, we'll hit the road again. Oh yeah, look at that, 231 kilowatts, 232 kilowatts, this thing reaps, amazing charging curve, that's crazy, and we're at uh, state of charge, oh there you go, 52% taking 232 kilowatts, that's amazing, couldn't even go to the washroom, the museum is closed, so... I did it uh, behind the power cabinets there. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I think I saw that on the internet, the charging curve around 55%. It's gonna decrease to 150 kilowatts. And then at 60%, it's gonna go back up to 200 kilowatts or so. Let's take a look at the numbers inside. Uh, so 60% will charge up to 70%, as I uh, mentioned earlier still taking 150 kilowatts and uh, yeah we'll drive all the way to Salm Alarm back here hopefully I can have the uh, 350 kilowatts charger when we come back then uh, golden again and uh, that'll be it look at that 174 62% taking 176 kilowatts <laughs> this is just insane that is crazy i love it oh focus 70 percent let's unplug still taking 150 kilowatts wow this thing rips that's amazing 71 percent i've been too slow stop there we go So good. Here we are, close the charging port. Good, let's hit the road.
Okay, so I just discovered something very annoying for an electric car. The car, at least when you're on, uh, using the adaptive cruise, cruise control, sorry, the car doesn't always use regener regenerative braking when it has to slow down. So sometimes the car has to slow down because there is the car in front is slowing down or, um, yeah, I don't know, there is a descent, so the car needs to brake. Well, it's gonna use the physical brakes instead of using uh, regeneration. So that's really bad for the efficiency. Like, why would an electric car do that, right? That doesn't make sense. Like, I understand that if you need more braking power, you're gonna use the physical brakes at one point, but still use, in the same time, use regeneration, right? And, and when it did that, it didn't need to use physical braking at all. That's for sure, because look, I'm driving at 110 kilometers an hour and I'm gonna uh, deactivate the adaptive cruise control. There is nobody behind me. Oh, it's slowing down very well. Like it's regenerating at 120 kilowatts. Look at that, I'm already at 70. So regeneration works really well on that car. Like I mentioned, I saw 120 kilowatts. So there is, in every case that I saw, that the car was using the physical brakes, there was no need for it. So I think that's gonna need software tuning because it's really a shame. That's already a car that's not very efficient, this specific model of the Ionic 5, at least because of the big wheels and all. So plus if it doesn't use regeneration all the time, like it just get worse. So anyway, uh, almost there, almost in uh, Revelstoke, we'll be charging uh, hopefully on the 350 kilowatts. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, here we are back to the charger in Revelstoke. So we're lucky, there is no one, so I'm gonna be able to charge on the 350 again. So we should have a quick charging ahead. session here. Arrived at your destination. Your route guidance is finished. All right. And we arrived with 14% state of charge. So that's a bit more than what ABRP said, but uh, yeah, remember I charged a bit, I charged 6% more. So yeah, ABRP is pretty close to be honest. Uh, so we've driven on that leg from Revelstoke to Salmon Arm and back here. 210 kilometers, the efficiency was 20.7 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers. So uh, yeah, let's uh, plug in and then we'll figure out how long we need to stay here. Okay, Revel Stoke, let's do that, 350. Now there we go. Nice. Good speed. And it's interesting to note that uh, I had no preconditioning on that last leg because it seems like the car likes it when the battery is at basically 20 to 22 degrees Celsius. So it doesn't precondition. And when it's preconditioning, it's gonna stop the preconditioning when the battery reaches the temperature I mentioned. So yeah, interesting. Uh, but uh, here we are, temperatures are increasing here and we're having more juice. And I'm sure that uh, anytime soon, we're gonna have the full 230 kilowatts. I need to charge to 52%. Uh, I might go to 80%. Like the charging curve of that car is pretty flat. If I can have 160, 170 all the way to 80%, I'm gonna stay here because I know that the charger in Golden is not very good. I just had 150 kilowatts this morning. So if I have more than that, as long as I have more than that, sorry, I think I'm gonna stay here. So it's probably gonna be until 80%, we'll see. But uh, yeah, still 122 kilowatts here. So I'm not sure if you have to wait a state of charge like 18, 17%, or if you have to wait uh, a certain temperature. I'm gonna look at the charging curves online. I didn't really pay attention at the beginning of the charging curves. I have 190 kilowatts now, so yeah. Uh, Ionic 5, oh, it's right here. Okay, so it looks like it's kind of normal. It's gonna stay at 120, yeah. 
until 15 to yeah 18 percent i think it's normal then it's going to ramp up to 190 that's what i'm seeing and at around 30 percent we're going to have the full 230. okay so that's yeah that's normal there you go 32 percent boom we're going to have the 230 kilowatts all the way to 52 percent 52 to 55 i forgot so yeah if it keeps going like this like I said, I'm just gonna go, because the charger in Golden doesn't work like it should. It's not working at 300. It cannot provide the full power to the car. Like it was just, I mean just, it was just giving me 150 kilowatts. So as long as I have more here, I'm just gonna stay here. Even if ABRP says I could almost go. Yeah, it wants me to charge to 52%. I'm already at 56%, but like I said, I know that in Golden, I'm not gonna have more than that. 178 kilowatts, 179 kilowatts I saw there. Wow. Six minutes to 80%, yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm just staying to 80%. There's no, there's no reason to leave because I'm not gonna have that speed. Um, probably in Golden, I'll have 150 all the way, it looks like. 20 minutes and we took 55.4 kilowatt hours crazy all right 79 percent uh yeah now it's at 100 kilowatts i'm gonna unplug and we'll hit the road uh, next charging stop golden All right, we just took the exit to the charger here in Golden. We had some preconditioning. The battery is at the temperature it likes. So between 20 to 25, 26 basically. So average temperature of 23. So we should have good speed if the charger works well. So that's perfect. Uh, yeah, we've driven 149 kilometers. The average consumption was 21.2. I'm going to take a picture of that. So, yeah, that's the usual consumption, I guess, on that car. But great. And there you go. Electrify Canada station. Nobody's here. So, yeah, I'll try the 350 again. I'll see. I'm not expecting amazing speed. Unfortunately, and we arrived with 42%. Uh, so that's a lot, but remember, I charged a lot more than I needed in Revelstoke because I had good speed. And I knew that this charger didn't really work well this morning. I had only 150 kilowatts, so I was like, yeah, I'm gonna charge the, over there a bit more because I had more than 150 kilowatts until the end so okay let's plug in and let's charge okay want to pee behind the bushes because there is like there's nothing here shitty uh, electrify uh, Canada stations okay so yeah that's what I expected we're at 150 kilowatts so, well, what are you going to do? That's uh, the usual stuff with the CCS charging stations, right? They're uh, not reliable. I mean, it's working and the speed is not that bad. I guess I shouldn't be complaining. It's going to, basically, it's going to do 150 kilowatts uh, up to 80%, I guess. And that's where we need to go because we have, okay, let's set the, uh, Cochrane here. Cochrane. Set as destination. I think it's 250. Okay, I'm going to take an, a look at an uh, ABRP. 237 kilometers. Insufficient charge to reach destination. Yeah, I know I'm charging 235. Yeah, 
so that would be stupid to stop somewhere to charge again like in Canmore or not but I'm having good speed it's gonna maintain that basically up to 80% so I'll go to 80% uh, because ABRP is telling me to charge up to 76% but then I would arrive home uh, with 5% uh, it was written that somewhere so uh, yeah I don't want to arrive home with 5% I'll uh, just go to 80% that should be a good buffer and uh, yeah that'll be it we'll arrive home with probably 7, 8, 9% 80% so we definitely had lower speed uh, at this charging location than the previous one uh, so yeah we had 150 kilowatt 150 kilowatts as a peak and we had then we had 130 135 kilowatts so not great but it wouldn't have changed anything to move to 150 kilowatts so interesting we still have 92 kilowatts at 81 percent that's amazing okay unplug and we're gonna hit the road Okay, it's almost uh, nighttime here in Cochrane and we're arriving home with 16% so not the best uh, optimization here uh, I wish I had stayed a bit less uh, longer there you go. at the, the charger in Golden but there is no trip planner so it's kind of hard to guess and uh, ABRP was telling me to stay until 76% so I stayed until 80 percent uh yeah abrp is always a bit pessimistic so yeah could have uh saved a couple of minutes maybe there and could have saved maybe five minutes if the charger was giving me full speed in golden so yeah that's uh some time that we lost during charging here but overall i think the uh ionic 5 did great with the charging uh did not so great with the efficiency like we we've driven 999 okay so 999 kilometers so that's going to be a thousand kilometers when i uh, reach home so that's perfect uh but the average efficiency is 20.8 kilowatt hour per 100 kilometers so that's not so great uh compared to the other cars of uh used on that trip and the weather wasn't that bad like i mean it was it's nine degrees now but it was up to 16 degrees during the day and there's we had a bit of rain but not much so anyway uh, i'll think about that and uh, do a debriefing video to let you know what i uh, what i think and the times because i don't exactly know the times i'm gonna have to remove some uh, some a uh, few minutes uh, here and there for uh, for the construction wow my wife parked really close here <laughs> oh man uh, I always do that anyway here we are in the garage I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, see you in my office okay so my impressions with the ID5 very good car very comfortable to drive, very quiet. The driver aids are really easy to use and really pleasant to use, a lot more than the Tesla driver aids, for example. Uh, but the car is way too thirsty for me. Like the efficiency is just really bad. Uh, as you can see, we used 196.3 kilowatt hours to complete the trip. So that's a lot. Um, and the weather wasn't that bad. It was cloudy, uh, some rain during the trip, but really light rain and really uh, for a short amount of time. Calm winds, as usual, like I mentioned in the video uh, for the mountains, 9 to 16 degrees Celsius, so not bad. Uh, it's really just the car is not efficient because of those big wheels and big fat tires. Uh, charging, so yeah, that's where the EGMP platform shines. We only spent an hour charging, despite onboarding 133 uh, a bit more than 133 kilowatt hours so really 
really good charging speed and curve for that uh, that platform and we could have spent even less time charging it's just because in golden the charger wasn't giving full speed to the car so we had uh, we had only 200 kilowatts uh, on the first charge and on the uh, second charge so the fourth charge of the day but second charge in golden we had only like 150 kilowatts max so the rated charging speed if we had full speed i'm pretty sure we could have spent five to ten minutes less charging so that would even have uh, helped the car even further uh, the highway conception like i mentioned very bad efficiency 24 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers on the 100 and on the fast section of the highway and uh, 18.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers on the slower section of the highway so really bad efficiency for that car uh, at least for that model the uh, ultimate here in so the highest trim in canada and the regeneration test so very bad as well 0.4 kilowatt hour recovered uh, and i think it is because like i mentioned in the video the car is sometime, uh, sometimes using the physical brakes instead of regenerating the energy into the battery, uh, at least when you're using uh, adaptive cruise control. So I don't understand that. And it did it a few times during the trip and you could feel it really. You can really feel the difference between the uh, car using regeneration and it's kind of smooth really. But when it's using the physical brakes during, uh, under cruise control, it's not as smooth and you really feel it and then you could see it on the screen that there is no regeneration uh, on the screen that i could uh, see it as well on car scanner so i think that's what happened i was uh, using cruise control like i'm using all the time uh, during that descent and the car used some uh, some used brake pads instead of using the regeneration and i think that's why the the, the score is bad here uh, anyway the total time 11 hours and 40 minutes so that was the fastest car on this salmon arm challenge uh, yeah and i think also what happened because if you look at the uh, charging time it's just a bit faster than the mac e but when i did the trip with the mac e it was in august so i think there was a bit more tourists and a bit more traffic uh, but when I did the trip with the Ionic 5 a few days ago, it's mid-October, right? So there is a lot less traffic, I think, and that explains why we have a difference here. Uh, but yeah, no, very good car. I would definitely go for a most efficient version if I wanted Ionic 5, uh, because what you get, honestly, on the Ultimate is not really useful, I think. Maybe the all-wheel drive, but you could take the preferred all-wheel drive here in Canada, and you wouldn't have the big wheels that are really sacrificing efficiency for yeah design i guess uh, even if i don't like the wheels the big wheels but uh, yeah there, there you have it really good car i would really be interested to do the trip with the same platform but on the most uh, a very efficient car like the ionic 6 uh, that would be really the car to beat i think uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed the video remember to subscribe to the channel Follow me on Instagram as well. You guys don't do that. And I would really like you doing that. You have more, uh, more news and I post some stories and I think it's uh, interesting. Uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.